Happy Monday, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Monday, October 2nd. Here we are. The month that a lot of us have been waiting for. And I don't know why I have been so emotional sitting down to record this podcast. This does not happen, but it is today. I have tried maybe four or five times over 30 minutes now, it looks like, about to sit down and hit the go button. We'll give this a try and see where it goes. We have a front-loaded week for this first week of October. Several things going on today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And then it tapers off and gets thin into the weekend. So if you get through the first part, you'll be able to cruise a little bit into the last part. But I wanted to zoom up to 10,000 feet and take a look at some of the things that are going on. Big macro picture here as we're setting the stage for October. And then we'll come back and talk about today's structure, which includes two yods and a grand kite. At least a grand trine with several planets involved and two sextiles on top of that. Two sextiles with the two quincunxes on the odds. I mean, this is a loaded up day today. Now, speaking of a grand trine, I wanted to remind you that Sarah has put on sale <laughs> some of our t-shirts this week. Have you wanted to get a t-shirt? Yes. Awesome. Well, it's the grand trine kite special, two yods, etc., our little podcast swag shop that Sarah is running for us at spiritualdesigns11.etsy.com. And, ooh, we have a coyote. Yeah, a Southwestern-themed coyote now. And you know it says, ow! So go pick up your T-shirt. It's on sale. Highest Timeline is in there, too. I'd get, I'd get both of those. Get both of those. Get the coyote and the Highest Timeline, and, man, you are set. Get four of each so that you don't have to wash them for two weeks and you can just wear them every other day. That's staying on the higher side of the aspect. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm getting in the groove here. Maybe we won't have to keep the Kleenex box at bay. Let's zoom up in the helicopter and get a big overview of what's going on. I was looking at one aspect over the weekend that I haven't mentioned, but it's a way out there aspect. 2026 now. Uranus trines Pluto, and we'll try to maybe dissect that later in the week, but Uranus rules Aquarius, Pluto will be in Aquarius in 2026, Uranus is surprises, Pluto is transformation, you can just figure that one out. But it's a trine, and that's probably why I'm so emotional, because I feel like the shift is happening in a positive way. Problem is, there's just a big mass collective out there that needs to wake up. But when you see that and you realize if people would just wake up, what this place could be. And that's what this chart is all about. It's about the transformation that it's going to take for us to get there. Yeah, the empath is still there. Now, speaking of Uranus, let's back up to next year, April 20th. Jupiter conjuncts Uranus. Another exploration we won't get into right now, but it is out there and worth considering. Jupiter expands. Uranus surprises. Let's bring it on closer to home another step. Now we have the eclipses in October. The 14th is a date to circle. That's the annular solar eclipse. That will be in Libra. And then the 28th, that's the partial lunar in Taurus. The one retrograde issue, taking another step back, is that Pluto stations direct October 10th. So all of this Pluto stuff that we're going to even talk about today because it is prominent, Pluto is stationing. So it is even more powerful than Pluto is just by itself. Keep that in mind. Now let's do talk about today. I'm going to try to do a video on this, so you might check the TikTok and YouTube channels to and the Instagram too. I'll put it on there. But try to figure this out because it is complicated and there are a lot of moving parts and a picture is going to help here. I'm sorry, but this is going to get a little bit heady because we have two yods. Let's pick that apart first because coming up we have this conjunction of Mars and and the nodes of the moon. The south node, particularly in the conjunction, opposition will be the north node, and that happens Wednesday just after noon Eastern. So for the next couple of days, we are in the big time applying energy of that aspect, which has had its challenges in the past. Tense, powerful, conflicting, warring Mars is hitting the representative of all the crap that we didn't resolve in the past. Scooby, rut -row, and that combination, Mars and the South Node, is at the top of one of the yods. That's the focus point. And that's the one that's made me so emotional. I can feel it right now. What's at the bottom? Uranus and the Moon on one side, and then Neptune on the other. 
That is one of those fated yods, and it could not be more powerful. You say, what's going to happen? I don't know, honestly, and I don't even want to try to go there. But it is very loaded. Let me keep going, because we have others to describe. Then I think the interpretation will have to roll into tomorrow. But the other yod has Neptune at the top. Then the sextile base planets are Venus on one side of the sextile, sextiling over to Mars and the south node of the moon. Here's where Pluto comes in, because it's in the grand trine that composes part of the kite. Pluto on one point of the triangle, Uranus and the moon on another, and then Mercury is the third. Now to tie all that together, we need the kite. So two more sextiles pointing up to Neptune completes at least the technical part of today, and that puts Neptune and Mercury in opposition to each other. There's the tug, the pull, the tension between the head and the heart, the head and the soul, the finite and the infinite. Now, let's come back tomorrow and we'll talk about some of the interpretations on this. I really don't like leaving it dangling, but there's just way too much to go through. However, I am going to give you a synopsis. Let's do a summary so you can start locking this into your mind, and then we'll really go into these tomorrow. This is highly transformative. It involves past karma being revealed. There is a factor of potential tension, potential surprises, it has a high spiritual component about it, and it gives us all the final choice of how we're going to participate. To work with the highest timeline, or stay stuck in the past, or I might even say get jolted out of the past. All of that and more is bundled in today's chart. All right, we'll dissect more tomorrow. Hope you have a great Monday. Stay on the high timeline side. Get your Coyote t-shirt. Your package is waiting for you on sale, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Oh, of course, spiritualdesigns11.etsy.com.